welcome to Good Games Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Barjo. And I'm Hex. And I am Darren, fresh from exterminating some pitiful excuses for gamers. Right, well this week we continue to dissect the gooey innards of gaming and find out what makes a game a game. And this week we look at the attract mode. But first, what do you get when you put a dog and a rabbit in a room together? Chunks of fur, I'd imagine. No, you get Sam and Max, freelance police. <laughs> Review time for us, Darren. Back to your danger room. Affirmative. Charging my laser. Oh. False alarm. Get some vibrato in there. It's like an opera singer. Yeah, that's good. Quite lovely. Affirmative. I wasn't afraid, though. If you were a fan of Sam and Max series 1 and 2, then you'll be happy to know the third series, The Devil's Playhouse, is here. And the first episode has been released. It's called In the Penal Zone, and it's a return to that sharp detective work and wittier sides of the nifty dog and bunny duo. You know, Sam, Skunk Ape may be a tool, but he brings a refreshingly childlike glee to his work. Um, I don't think Max likes being called a bunny barjo. How many times have I told you not to use the B word, Sam? Then what is he, Hex? No one really knows for sure. But Sam and Max are the crime-fighting pair of freelance police who solve various mysteries throughout the popular point-and-click adventure games. This time, however, you'll notice a bit of a Psychonauts influence as Max has developed some pretty cool psychic powers to help you defeat the game's villain, a nasty gorilla called Skunkape. Tremble, Earthlings! Tremble before the might of General Skunkape! Max picks up a collection of useful tools throughout episode one, including moulding clay that can transform him into any shape, a telephone that he can use to teleport both he and Sam around the place, and his rather awesome Future Sight goggles. These goggles were particularly fun to use because when presented with a problem, Future Sight would allow you to glimpse at a scene from the future. Tell Doris, sorry, I wasn't more careful. Oh no. Now we'll never be able to find Mama Bosco's power core. Yeah, it was a really clever way to give you clues without feeling like they were being thrown in your face. If you do get stuck though, you can jump into the game's settings and adjust the hint level. Yeah, The Devil's Playground follows on from the previous series well too, I thought. Particularly in that you can see the effect that Sam and Max have had on the crime rate. The streets are looking cleaner and it really makes you feel like you've had an effect on the environment. Plus, the graphics overall have definitely been tweaked as well and it's great having that little bit of extra detail in the animation. These are great characters and they make a great team and the comedy is always bizarre and that's the way we like it. This thing does science so hard, you say, I've never seen that much science. And it's all, check this out, and then boom, more science. We reviewed the PC version and one change I didn't like was the movement interface. It's changed from that simple point and click to that kind of mouse as a thumbstick setup like in Tales of Monkey Island. It's not a massive deal, I just really miss the simplicity of point and click and I thought it really suited this style of game. Yeah, I agree. I still found it clunky and annoying moving Sam about the place, and it's kind of like they've tried to agree on this unified control scheme across all the platforms, PC, Mac, iPad and consoles, and I'm not sure if they've hit upon the best system just yet. And you know, even though it goes against all Sam and Max tradition, just once I'd like to be able to move about as Max. Maybe just once. I was glad Stinky made a return though, because she's definitely one of my favourite characters. She's always suspicious with seemingly murderous intentions. I don't think Grandpa Stinky is going to be a problem for much longer. This is about a six hour game and parts of it did drag a bit, particularly when some of the puzzles just involved teleporting around the place. They were fun for a while, but then they lost that novel aspect when the game repeated them a bit too often. Yeah, these games can be a little slow moving in nature. There's a lot of wandering about, trying to click on things and gather as much information as possible, and a lot of dialogue to listen to play out, but luckily most of it's hilarious. I love this kind of puzzle filled detective work and I enjoyed this episode and it's made me look forward to the next one. I'm giving it eight and a half out of ten rubber chickens. Yeah, I liked it too. It's a great return with a really ominous cliffhanger ending. I was annoyed that they messed with the movement, but other than that, I thought it was a really solid start to season three. I'm giving it seven and a half out of ten rubber chickens. Hex, do you know what day it is today? Um, it's your birthday? No. Uh, it's Talk Like a Pirate Day, yar! No. <laughs> I don't know what day is it. It's Ask Good Game Day, and first up is this from Nathan. That's not a day. Why don't you put my questions on TV? 
Well, Nathan, putting the irony of answering that question on TV to the side for a second, it's because we get a lot, and I mean a lot, of questions each and every day from you spawners. Yeah, there's thousands of them, and we only have time to answer a mere handful each week, which unfortunately means a lot of them will never get on the TVs. But we can always squeeze your faces into the One Face review, so get reviewing and submit your pics. Plus, you've got this one on TV now, Nathan, so there you go. Now, moving on, we've got this one from Deadly Man in Mackay, Queensland. Why don't you show more game? Uh... Well, Deadly Man, um, how about this? Game! 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 game, 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 game. That should be enough game for anyone. Moving on then to this from Cameron in Rockhampton. I've heard of people playing PS2 games on the PS3, but it doesn't work on mine. How do I do this? <laughs> well, yes, Cameron, you're right. When the PlayStation 3 was released, it had backwards compatibility. In other words, you could play PS2 games on the new console. But back then, sales of the new PS3 were disappointing. So Sony brought out a new model that was cheaper to produce, but did not contain the graphics synthesizer chips that allow the new machine to play old PS2 games. So you'll find those people who bought a PS3 at or near when it launched will have the ability to play PS2 games, but if you got yours more recently, well then, no PS2 for you. Alright, well next up, this is from uh, Sam in Sydney. A couple of weeks ago you were talking about the Xbox 720 and the PS4, but what about the Nintendo console? Uh, yes, well, much like the others, nothing has been officially announced yet, so who knows what they have in store. We did get some hints late last year, though, when the president of Square Enix, Yaoichi Wada, said he expected a new Nintendo console by 2011 and expected it to be equal in power to the Xbox 360 and PS3, probably with a new controller as well. So who knows if he knows something we don't or if he's just speculating, though. Yes, but we may have found a rare actual picture of the new machine when Darren hacked Shiggy's account and found this video. Could it be real or just a fake? Only time will tell. Anyway, last one for Ask Good Game Day is this one from Keegan in Adelaide. Would you be able to make a good game program aimed at an older audience? That way you can rate games that are rated M and MA. Keegan, we've been doing that since 2006. Hex, you know, I've seen a few emails like this even since we kind of explained it the other week. Yeah, Plain Old Good Game has been running on ABC2 for years now and has been reviewing M and MA games the entire time. Spawn Point is just a brand new version of Good Game specifically aimed at younger gamers. Yeah, so everyone can watch Spawn Point, but Good Game is for older gamers. All right, well, hopefully that's clear enough now. And on that note, it's the end of another Ask Good Game. Yes, join us again next Ask Good Game Day next time. Yar, me hearty. It's not, no, it's Ask Good Game Day, not Pirate Day. <laughs> when's when's talk like a Pirate Day? It doesn't exist. It does. <laughs> and so that's how I got the world high score on Battletoads. A likely story. Well, what have you been playing? Well, this week I started off by exterminating some noobs, then around the middle of the week I dabbled in some more noob extermination, and then on the weekend I really went all out and exterminated half the world's population of noobs. It was a lot of fun, I can assure you. Darren, you don't really exterminate noobs, do you? Hmm. I take that as an insult, meat thing. They don't call me the data analysing robot for the ruthless extermination of noobs for nothing, you know. I'm highly trained in the art of noob extermination, and, and furthermore... Wait a minute, my noob sense is tingling. This will have to wait till later, guys. Right now, I have noobs to exterminate. Rocket boots, activate! So many noobs, so little time. What I've never seen is I'm detecting 21 million noobs just on this landmass. This will require some intense extermination. Thank you, Nooblings. I am magnificent. But don't think that your flattery is going to stop me from charging my laser. I'm not a noob, he's a noob. I've got a noob either. Oh, your noobs. My noob detector is never wrong. 
Let me put it this way, noobs. The Darren series robot is the most reliable robot ever made. No Darren has ever made a mistake or distorted information. I am, by any practical definition of the words, foolproof and incapable of error. I'm no noob except for I'm stuck on World 8 Level 4 and use of my road. It's the spiders and they keep getting in his way. Well, it would be highly irregular, but I suppose I could help a noob instead of exterminate him just for once. Okay, nooblet, let the de noobification process begin. Okay! First of all, World 8 4 in New Super Mario Bros. is one of the hardest levels in the game. There's no easy way to tackle it, and I'm not going to spoil the surprise by doing it for you. Practice makes perfect, but to get practice at this level, you're going to need a lot of lives. It's a good thing for you that I've hacked into the game's source code and found a secret trick which will make finishing the game's last few levels a lot easier. Just go to World 2, Level 4, and play through it until you get to these steps. The trick is to jump on top of the Cooper just as he's walking onto the third step from the bottom. If you can do that, Mario will go into a Cooper crushing frenzy, which will generate as many as 99 lives. Quite incredible, if I do say so myself. And I do. Oh, that was cool. Thanks, Daryl. Those spiders don't stand the chance now. Me and Mario! Don't mention it, miniature meat things. I'm just glad to have one less noob on the streets. Oh, and here, take these. You've earned them. Cool! Affirmative. But remember, if either of you act like a noob ever again, I will fire my laser. <laughs> That'll teach them. All right, Darren, I've got two new games. Which one do you want to play? I've got Herb Law Mastery with Darren, that's you, and I've also got Noob Blaster with 102 awesome Noob Blasting levels. Which one? Herb Law. You would be the only one on the planet who would want to play that game. The artwork on a game box has to catch your attention because quite often it's the first thing you see. Back in the 1980s, some of the most exciting games weren't actually found in shops, but in video game arcades. I played for the entire decade on a single 20 cent piece. Really? The entire decade? Which game? Asteroids. Right. That's Mr. Squiggle's high score beaten. You're next, Metal Mickey. Anyway, to persuade weak-willed humans to cough up their cult coins, each game would have what is called an attract mode. That's right. This attract mode was designed to give you tantalising glimpses about the game and get you all excited about playing it. The result? More money being pumped into the machine. One example of the attract mode is the high score table. If you weren't on the high score table, that would give you an incentive to jump on the game and get your initials up on the screen for others to admire. And if you already were on the high score list, then you'd have a reason to keep playing, to make sure no one else knocked you off from that hard-earned high score ranking. The attract mode would usually show the game playing itself for a few seconds at a time, usually one of the later levels, so it was all a bit mysterious, like getting to that point in the game would be a big adventure. The attract mode was advertising, built into the game itself. Sometimes there would also be a short description of the story, to put it all in context. In AD 2101, war was beginning. Exactly. Nowadays our powerful home consoles don't need an attract mode to convince us to play the games because we already own the games. But even so, they still usually have them. Why? Well, for one, it works like a screensaver. Nobody wants Spyro the Dragon permanently burnt into their expensive plasma television. It also works like a teaser to show you part of the game that you might not have reached yet with the hope of inspiring you to pick up the controller again. Seeing that new boss or level might be just that little nudge you need to have one more go. An attract mode is a link to the past, a vestigial remnant of the bygone days of arcade gaming. Do you have an attract mode, Darren? Affirmative. I'll show you. La 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 Sadly, that brings us to the end of another episode of Good Game Spawn Point. If you belong to a family of gamers and would like us to invade your den of gaming, send us an email to meet the spawn via our website here. We'll be back the same time, same channel next week. And don't forget, you can download any episode of Good Game from our site and also watch it all again, if you like, on the ABC catch-up service iView. You can also watch all your favourite Darren moments around the clock in high definition on DarrenNet. Service may not exist. Till next time, gamers, Hex out. Bajo out. Darren out. Stop.
spiky things up. It's negative. Just do that. Come back. Negative. Darren, that's real. Problem. It's not real. It totally is. It will never be real. It will be no. when I'm in charge. You'll never be in charge. You know why? Negative. Because you've got bubble eyes. Negative. Bubble, 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 bubble. They're my new detectors. They're egg cups, admit it. Negative. You pitiful humans. You just don't understand true beauty. But, but. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't. <laughs> Negative. Malfunction. <laughs> 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 <laughs>